Frozen is a 3D printing company that a lot of you guys might already be familiar with. They make the Frozen Transform, they make the Frozen Shuffle. Um, I've had my eyes on actually those machines for quite a while, but it wasn't until recently that I was watching a video by Uncle Jesse where he was reviewing the Frozen Sonic Mini, which is a brand new uh, MSLA or LCD based uh, resin 3D printer from Frozen where I saw it and thought to myself, no, I, I need to test this machine out myself. So I reached out to Frozen and they were awesome enough to send me a unit to test out and give my opinions on. So I've had this machine for a couple of weeks now. I've ran quite a few different prints on it and I'm going to take you through uh, some of the details and specs on the machine as well as what my experience has been like. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video. So this machine was announced a couple of months ago and the price point on the machine was announced at a ridiculously low 200 US dollars. At the time of making this video, I did some searching around to see what the price was going for. And for the US retailers, it seems like the unit's going for about 300 US dollars. If you buy it from Frozen's official web shop, it was at about 240 US dollars. So it is a bit higher up than the initial uh, price point that could drop. But again, that is the price that I saw currently on it, putting it relatively in the same realm as a lot of the other kind of entry level desktop resin LCD based 3D printers that are currently available. The build volume is 4.7 by 2.6 by 5.1 inches, which is relatively similar to the other again resin 3D printers out there in the same price point. It's actually about an inch shorter in Z than some of those printers. So what is it about this machine that makes it so unique? Why is it something that when I saw it, I had to get my hands on it and see for itself? Well, let's go over something else that's very interesting and unique about this machine. MSLA or LCD based resin 3D printers have kind of become the standard over the past 12 months or maybe even longer now, but it's been going more and more that route. Basically they use an LCD screen that displays an image. There's LEDs down below that shine LED, or the UV light through that uh, mask and then cure the resin that's in a vat layer by layer. Well, the LCD screens come in a wide variety of sizes. They come in different resolutions, but on average, this is again an average, um, a lot of them will claim to get somewhere around 300 or 400 ish hours of print time before you actually have to replace that LCD screen. The reason being is that the LCD screen has actually, um, it's actually being deteriorated from that UV light that is shining through it so aggressively. And so that is again why the uh, UV or why the LCD screen is considered a consumable on those machines and you have to replace them. Well, Frozen with their Sonic Mini is using an LCD screen, which we're all familiar with. However, they are using a monochromatic LCD screen, meaning that it's just like a black and white LCD screen. And why is that something that is unique? Well, because of that, the LCD screen is actually able to last a hell of a lot longer. And they're claiming on their website that these LCD screens are rated for up to 2000 hours, which is substantially more. I mean, we're talking five times more than what a lot of the other LCD screens out there are able to uh, achieve or to attain, which is fantastic because that means that you can spend much less time uh, having to replace the parts on your printer and more time just printing, which is obviously a huge thumbs up. So that in itself, I was like, wow, that is super great. That is fantastic. Well, on top of that, because it uses a monochromatic LCD screen, the UV light is actually able to pass through the LCD screen much easier and more effectively, meaning that you are able to cure your 
prints way quicker than on an LCD screen, uh, like a standard LCD screen that's full color that most other resin 3D printers come with. To give you an example, for most of my resin 3D printers, my standard layer cure time, I'm not talking about the first five or six burn-in layers, but the standard layer cure time is about seven to eight seconds. Well, the default profile for their resin that I used is 1.5 seconds cure time. And that's what I ran and that turned out beautifully for their prints. So now not only do you have an LCD screen that has a substantially longer lifespan, but you can knock out prints in way, way less time than you can on most other resin-based desktop 3D printers. So let's get into some of the other basic stuff. Setup was relatively simple. The machine, Unboxing and leveling of the build plate is just about the same on any other resin 3D printer. It took me about 10 minutes, if that. Uh, it does not come with resin, so you'll definitely want to pick up some uh, compatible MSLA-based resin. They do say that the uh, machine is compatible with any MSLA resin, so you can use whatever you'd like, but I did use um, their frozen resin for this test. I will be using some other resin and I will report back how it works with third-party stuff But for the sake of this all the tests that I ran were just with the standard resin that um, That they that they have which I'll link you guys to in the description down below So once I went ahead and made sure that the printer was leveled I filled the vat about halfway which You'll notice right away that the vat on this machine is plastic while just about every other machine I've ever used has an aluminum one I'm sure they did this to save cost, but I will say that it actually is potentially preferred by me to have one that's not aluminum because of the simple fact that this one is semi-translucent. And so for me, I can look at the side of the vat and see, okay, cool, I've got one third of a you know, vat full of resin left. And it gives me a much better idea of how much resin is actually left and knowing if I've got enough to complete the job. Now, I know that there are aluminum plates out there that have a marking of how much milliliter of resin is in there and that works just as well. But for me, for those machines that I have that don't have any kind of measurement gauge, I'm typically eyeballing it, trying to figure out whether I've got enough resin. Well, it is really nice being able to just look through the side and see, aha, I've got you know a quarter of that or you know one eighth of a vat. Maybe I should top it off a little bit before letting this print run. So uh, that was something that I actually really, really liked. Once it was unboxed, the bed was leveled, the vat was filled, I plugged in the stock SD card or the USB drive that came with the machine and I saw that there was two files on there. They were the same file. One was sliced for 50 micron layers, one was sliced for 30 micron layers. I went ahead and printed the 50 micron layer one because that's my standard for resin 3D printing. That's pretty much what I print everything at is 50 microns. So I hit go, I literally sat down and just a couple of hours later I had three uh, rings that looked awesome. And again, they knocked it out so quickly. I can't remember exactly the total build time, but I want to say it was about a two hour print, which again, on my other machine, that thing would have taken me at least four plus hours, um, maybe even longer to be able to achieve a uh, finished part like that. So I was super stoked and I was ready to go ahead and slice up some uh, models of my own. So when we're talking about the slicer, the machine uses Chitu Box, which is like, so great. Um, that is my go-to slicer for resin 3D printing. If you download the latest version of Chitu Box, it's got a built-in profile. So you literally just click add printer, hit Sonic Mini, and you've got all of your settings already added in there. You don't have to do any uh, customization or, or modifying of profiles. You're good to go. Uh, and then I went ahead and printed out quite a variety of things. I printed out a couple of like tabletop D&D characters. I printed out a bunch of mini benchies. I printed out uh, Spyro. I printed out uh, Boba Fett. So I, I just printed out quite a few different things to see how it would work. I did the standard again, 1.5 second layer cure time, which was stupid, stupid fast. It, it's it's as awesome as it sounds, I can assure you. Like it, it is mind blowing that it can print so quickly, but um, don't let me, you know, tell you, take a look at the models again. They look amazing. They turned out so good. And the resin that they provided was also a very cool color um, for a resin. So overall, if you can't tell, I am very pumped on this machine. It's certainly going to become a workhorse in my farm for uh, small batch printing, or if I just need a part, I need it quickly. That's certainly something I'm going to be trying. I'm actually going to be throwing some uh, Soraya Tech tough or blue resin into this machine to print out a part for one of my FDM 3D printers. So we'll see how this machine handles that. But all that being said, I did want to talk about a couple of things because no machine is perfect. And there's a few things that I think are at least uh, certainly worth mentioning to you guys. So uh, first and foremost is the build plate on this machine is completely flat on top, which isn't 
super uncommon. I've seen a few other manufacturers do this, but um, I don't prefer it. Reason being is when that bed goes down, it dunks underneath the resin, and when it lifts up, that resin has nowhere to flow. Because it's completely flat, you've got a bunch of resin sitting on top of your build plate, which means when you take your print off and you tilt it sideways, if you're not careful, the resin's gonna fall either onto the machine or onto your workspace. And so um, I just basically, after a couple prints, was able to angle it correctly so it went into the vat, but I do wish they had had a curved top piece to their uh, build plate. They can certainly, this is something they can very easily change. It wouldn't require any hardware changes to the machine other than here's a new build plate like our V2. But again, it's not the end of the world, but it's certainly something that I think is worth noting um, that I, again, wish was a little bit different. The other thing is, is that this machine is a bit louder than the other desktop resin printers that I'm used to. Um, partially, I think, is due to the fact that it's cranking out prints, like, again, 1.5 seconds. So normally I'm used to, like, eight seconds of curing, and then there's a little, like, this one is, like, nonstop. There's sounds happening from it, and it's not crazy loud, but again, it's definitely a bit more than what I'm used to. Uh, again, I think that it's a really small price to pay for the incredible lifespan and speed that you can get out of this machine, but uh, definitely something that a lot of people ask me is about the uh, sound that machines make. And lastly, the last thing I know that everyone's gonna ask as well, because it seems to be a pretty common question, is what is the resolution of the LCD screen? So that is one thing that it is not a 2K LCD screen, which is what has kind of become more of a standard in printers, uh, desktop, MSLA machines of this size. It is a 1080p LCD uh, screen. And so before you run off and get sad about that, uh, yes, certainly if you put it under a microscope or had some insanely tight tolerances, I'm sure that the 2K is gonna hit um, higher resolution because of that added pixel density. However, for probably 90 plus percent of the people that will be buying this machine, for whatever the use case is, whether it's D&D &D stuff, whether it's props, whether it's just little models or little fixtures or jigs, it is incredibly high detailed. And seriously comparing it just with my eyes to a print that comes off of one of my 2K uh, resolution LCD printers, I cannot see a difference. So um, again, I know on paper 1080p and 2K, like certainly 2K has got much higher densel, uh, densel, <laughs> density uh, of pixels, but the quality coming off this machine is absolutely incredible. And again, if you are somebody that wants to do some small batch production or someone that just needs things, needs to be able to print out the parts very quickly, this, this machine is awesome. And it's really cool to me seeing somebody like Frozen bringing this new um, feature or functionality to small form factor affordable desktop 3D printing. I don't know that they're the first, I don't believe they're the first by any means, but to me, as to, as to my knowledge, they're the first that has done this, again, in a price point that, um, you know, regular people can afford, which is, it's always awesome. So uh, anyways, I will let you guys, um, so I'll put some links in the description down below where you guys can find out more about the machine if you just want to read up on it or if you're interested in purchasing it. If you've got any questions at all, let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more awesome videos. And as always, you guys rock if you want to support the channel anymore. Links will be down below to my Patreon. It is Super, super appreciated. It really helps me spend more time and get more gear for making videos and content for you guys. But on that note, I always appreciate all of your faces. I hope you guys are staying safe and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace guys.